Welcome to Pierce the Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando, and we're on episode 295. Yeah, five away from our big 300. It's getting crazy. We're almost there. Are you uh, going to say like Bonanza or Extravaganza? Yeah, I didn't know. Celebration. I, I was going to say celebration, but I don't want to lock us into a celebration. But now that we're now that we're around your inventory, maybe we do do some glitter bombs. It'd be, <laughs> it'd be fun, like our 100. So Mike's talking about the inventory. So I am overwhelmed right now. So I try to keep the studio space cleared out i mean mike will say that's not always the case but i had some major hauls and i'm kind of trying to process and i'm trying to cr- leave my living space my living space and my ebay slash podcast space the ebay slash podcast space. so but we'll talk about that a little bit later though so what's, what's going on with you uh you know i mean uh, a lot more of the same except for i kind of had a cool experience this last weekend so we had memorial day weekend and you know, I, I I had a feeling garage sales might not be amazing because mm-hmm. it being Memorial Day weekend. And I, I think that historically has kind Usually of been the case. Bad, yeah. uh, I know you did really well, so <laughs> I'm a little jealous. But uh, I decided, you know what? Instead, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a a, a thrift store trip, but I'm gonna do it with my family. So I had a four day weekend. It was nice to spend it with my family, but I didn't want to like just dedicate time away from the family. So we decided to go together. So we went to lunch, and then we went to one of our honey holes. And it was really neat going because this is the first time that I've taken like two kids seriously thrift store shopping. Now we have gone before with when our our littlest was born, but at that point, you know, he's still in a car seat. He sleeps the whole time. Now I basically have like two two little monsters running around. See, one it's of them easier running when they're babies to source. Yeah, when they're infants. Oh, uh, so one of them, you know, is actually walking around the store, and the other one is almost ten months. So he's sitting up in the, in the the seat in the you know, the cart and he's trying to grab things and mess with stuff. And so, uh, it was definitely different going with a family like that, but it was kind of neat because my wife decided, all right, my son kept asking for toys. So she was like, I'm just going to go to the toy section of the thrift store. And that's kind of where I'm going to spend most of my time. And she actually did better than I did. She, she scored a lot more things over in the toy (laughs) section. And I love uh, the toy section. I, I typically do pretty well there. But I was like, well, she's already there. I'll go somewhere else. But the nice thing was because she was kind of confined there, you know, to keep the kids occupied. So she had a lot more time to look stuff up. She actually found quite a few things. She found, um, you know, several, several new toys that sell for really well. In fact, uh, you know how we've talked in the past about like Skylanders. There's also Mm -hmm. the uh, Infinity, which I think is like the Marvel version of that. It it, it depends. I mean, they're not, it's up and down. Depends on the model. But there was like an unopened box of like six of them. It was like a kit. Okay. And we picked it up for like three bucks and it oh, sells yeah, for like so. 40, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know, quite a few things that we were able to get, you know, pretty good over in that section. So I was really, you know, excited that not only was she able to keep the kids occupied, but <laughs> she actually had some of the best scores of the day. Uh, but it was funny because as we were, you know, I'm walking around the store doing things and you know how as a parent, like, you know, your kids cry or, you know, their voice. Yeah. So across the store, it's like, I hear a kid crying. I'm like, yep, that one's mine. And so I knew I didn't have that long there. So I was still able to score uh, a couple shirts. I scored uh, some cycling shoes. We've okay, talked okay. a lot about those. Those I are definitely below. Yeah. Uh, but if you can find some cycling shoes, especially if they're carbon fiber bottom, you can do really, really well with those. So I didn't do too bad. And we were only probably in the store for, I don't know, maybe 35, 40 minutes total. And we ended up walking away with, you know, at least $300, $350 in net profit. So, yeah, not bad for a little outing with the family. Paid for the gas, paid for the lunch that we had as a family, plus some, you know, profit after all said and done. So uh, definitely a, a cool experience when you can do that with the family. And I'm excited to get to the stage where my sons get a little bit older and we don't have to, like, occupy them as much. Mm. And we can kind of let them do their own thing. Um, and even kind of bring them into the fold so they'll know some things to look for. You know, maybe even make my kids the the toy experts and they can spend some time in the toy section of a store and looking up stuff. And uh, that'll be pretty fun. But it was fun uh, sourcing with my family and have had quite a few good sales recently on um, on eBay. I've sold. Remember, I talked about those cameras that I picked up. Yeah. So I tested all three of them and one of them didn't work. But I wasn't too concerned about this because even when I when I picked up the camera, so I picked up three broadcasting cameras old i mean they're really it's not cutting edge technology but it's still really solid cameras for use of like broadcasting things um, like church events or things like that and there was three of them at a church rummage sale and i picked them all up and the reason i picked them up originally is i saw the lens and i'm like wow this is like really good canon l glass lens so these cameras have to 
sell for decent money. And even if the cameras don't, the lens itself will cover the cost because they wanted $55 per camera. And sure enough, one of them didn't work. And so I listed that one uh, and the camera sold for like $60 plus shipping. And then the lens, because I separated them, the lens sold for $100 plus shipping. Mm, so nice. just the just the 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 price that I made off of yeah. the broken camera and the lens covered the mm. cost of all three cameras. So now, and I've gotten several like $400, $450 offers on the, the two cameras that I have that are working. And I, I'm holding off to, I think I could at least make 500 on them. Uh, so... I know it's like four fifty to five hundred. What's the big difference there? But that's already a price drop, you know. And it's a hundred dollars against our mini sewed from you know a week ago. Yeah, taken. But but I, I know these will sell. Like these are literally the day I posted them. I'm getting four hundred dollar offers. Oh, okay. So I'm not I'm not too okay. concerned about them selling. And you're part time, so it's not as yeah. I don't care to sell it now. Yeah, I don't need to make I don't need to make the sell in order to pay my bills. So okay. okay. And not the end of the world there, uh, but it's been nice being able to to have some good sales. I talked last week about my the Otis Spunkmeyer oven that sold, uh, and then also what else? There's like another big sale, so it's been pretty nice because you know when you're getting twenty dollars sales here and there, it's fine. But if that's the only sale you have for the day, and then you got to go and pack it and ship it, and it's like. That's a lot of work for a twenty twenty dollar item. And then when you have to like drive to the post office, and that's the yeah, only that's reason the only you thing you got. Uh, but when, we live out there. Yeah. You know? Yep. But when you get a few, when you get a few big ones, or you get multiple smaller ones, it makes it worth it. So uh, it's definitely definitely been a good couple of weeks for me. And um, what else did I do? Oh, it's been returns though. That's what's been oh. killing me. So I had two r- really frustrating ones. So one of them, I sold a pair of shoes to a guy who. They were nice Kohan dress shoes. In fact, like they were in really good condition. Mm. And it was like a $40 profit sale, which is pretty good for shoes for for Kohans. You know, they're not, it's not Alan Edmond or anything yeah, like that. But isn't bad the yeah. Kohan these days. Yeah, no, it's, it's yeah. a pretty good sale. So anyways, the guy asked, he's like, hey, can you make sure it gets to me by Tuesday? I have a flight. And so we're like, yeah, like no problem. He's probably got an event. What, he's what got day to wear was it I don't remember when it was, but it was, it was a Wednesday or Thursday, something like that. Okay. So, uh, or, or Friday even. So it wasn't a big deal though. You do priority. Yeah. We we were able to get it to him. So we were like, yeah, no problem. We'll get it to you. So he gets it. And then about four days later, we get a return request and we have returns open. Like it's, we have returns available. Uh, but he said, he sent us a message like, Hey, thank you so much for getting these to me so quickly. Uh, but I need to return them because I didn't notice two scuffs on the front and he sent pictures, but, those, those scuffs definitely weren't there. Oh, you were talking about this like post production. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta remember. So um, he and at the bottom of the message he said, "Plus these don't fit really well, so I need to return them." <laughs> but the reason he selected for the return was item does not match the pictures. Yeah, I don't. I nad. Yeah. So I got an I nad for something that in reality was because they didn't fit him, which is fine. I have returns. I would have accepted the return, and then two. Uh, I, I'm like 99% sure he just had like a wedding yeah, or a funeral 100%. or some kind of formal event he needed to fly to. So he needed some shoes and he rented them from me, which again, it's not the end of the world. Like as a reseller, we deal with that all the time, but to get an INAD for that, that's where it's like, do you not realize what, what you're doing? So I'm waiting for the return because eBay for the most part won't even mess with anything until like the return is mm-hmm. like resolved. So we still haven't received those back yet. Um, I mean, I don't know what happens if it's easier if they don't come back at all. If I could just say, hey, you never sent these back. You know, can we get this INAD removed? Uh, plus the message will says... close it and clear everything. Clear it. Yeah. Uh, but if they do make it back, I, I still think we have a strong case to make when the fact that the message itself said these didn't fit. So oh, yeah. true, true, true. instead of selecting, it didn't fit. So that was annoying. And then I had another renting situation. So I sold a PSP game. I, I mentioned this in our Discord. I sold a PSP game and the person had it for about a week. And then I get a message and a, a item return request. And their message, their reasoning was, oh, right. I don't have my PSP anymore, so I can't play this game. I ordered this by mistake. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. If you don't have a PSP, why would you have bought a game for a PSP? It would have been better if they said that like, I accidentally bought it. Yeah, this is pressing th- wrong button press. My kid bought it. But to say I don't have my PSP anymore, so I have no way of playing this game. I ordered it by mistake. I mean, who does that? If I, I mean, I don't have a PlayStation Five. I'm definitely not buying PlayStation Five games. Maybe they're on that legal medicine. 
Yeah, maybe they're like oh <laughs> this would be a fun game oh yeah forgot i forgot i forgot i haven't had a psp since i was in high school i mean that's like, that's like i haven't had a i have not had a game i mean i have game cubes that i sell but right. i haven't played with gamecube in like 20 years yeah. like i just bought some random mario game yeah for GameCube. so th again i'm 90 percent sure that he just rented the game played it for a couple of days and i was like oh this isn't that great i don't love it and wanted to return it so it's just annoying i'm sure all of you resellers ha can uh, can relate to that when you when you have an item rented and it gets returned to you which again it's not the end of the world but when you get an inad for it oh it's the worst let us know in the comments below what's what's one of the worst customer returns you've had for you you know for sure they rented it tell us your story uh we'd love to we'd love to feel the pain with you so let me give you a little commentary though on what you discussed first idea of returns i was thinking about this today because Returns have, do hurt for me. Like the, when you sell higher price items, they hurt even more. So this last month I had a camera that got returned for 150. I had a pair of shoes that I only paid like four bucks for. And then I had a pair of shoes that I paid 15. They got returned and they were $112 pair of shoes. And I think I mentioned before where I've had a lot of high dollar returns, but it had me thinking about, you know, why do you go to Costco, Mike? Why do you buy like electronics and stuff like that at Costco? Oh, they got a good return policy. The return policy, right? So you're always going to keep going back to Costco. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're a good, they got a good price too, but I know they stand behind their, their product for sure. Yeah. And so I think the same applies on eBay now. And it's not at that level because obviously there's a lot more buyers on eBay than there are that go to Costco. I think, I don't know, maybe not, but Anyways, you know, it, it's the people aren't going there, aren't going to your eBay store for the same things they're going to Costco for. But I have had multiple times where people have just, you know, wondered about my item. And I always said, hey, listen, if it doesn't work out, you're always welcome to return it. And I would say probably eight out of 10 times I don't get that return. They're happy with the item. They felt confident about buying it. And so returns are a good thing. Now, the bad side is the INADs. And I had a similar INAD. Somebody had bought a Robert Graham shirt for me, which I I, hardly, I don't ever search Robert Graham, but it was one that sold for 75 bucks and I paid $5 for it. And I, I was kind of pumped about it. And I was like, oh, sweet. Like, I haven't sold one of these in a while. Now, I will say I was in a rush that day that it sold. And so I quickly just like folded it as fast as possible, threw in a poly mail and just shipped it out. And, and it, it got to its place the next day because it was in San Diego. I get this INED, looks nothing like described, it's wrinkled, it smells like packed poorly. I'm like, what? Okay, the wrinkling, I'll admit to. The smelled poorly, I'm not going to admit that. And the packed poorly, okay, maybe. Okay. And they were really upset about it. I mean, all they got to do is wash and dry the clothes. Yeah, I mean, if it smells bad, that, I, that's one thing I'm No, I won't sell stuff that smells bad. Right. Like, that's but, just bad. But wrinkled, I mean, if you get clothes that are wrinkled, I mean, that's just part of the deal. Like, yeah, it went through the mail. Yeah. Anyways, I was like, oh, this is crazy. You know, well, I guess I'll, I'll just resell it. But I was kind of bummed about it because Robert Graham, they don't sell that well. So I was kind of like, I hope I never get it back. And sure enough, 30 days later, never heard back from the person. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so always be aware that, you know, people might be really upset and they want to return something, but that doesn't mean they're always going to return it. Just like uh, your shoes, your shoes may never come back or they may come back. You know, the worst is when you think that it's not going to come back to you and like, you know, the 11th hour, you get this notification, this email, like it's been shipped. It's like, oh, it's the worst. So, all right. Hey, before we move on, though, I do, do want to share about our Discord. It's been a great time. We're at 100 plus on our Discord. And I think it's time for us. I haven't talked to this with Mike, but we kind of have to do a virtual meetup here soon. Yeah, Just I think that's say, a good idea. Thank you to everyone and chat yeah. with everyone. So stay tuned for that in the Discord. We'll be doing that soon. Uh, great for all of you. I've learned so much. I've actually, uh, myself, even made money, saved money uh, on the Discord, whether it be from a bolo that I came across that somebody had shared, whether it be somebody had shared a tip on shipping, whatever it is, it's been, it's been great. And the community has been great. And it, you know what I love about discords is that they're asynchronous is that the right word or like you you don't have to, like you can message somebody and you can get back to it like later right right yeah. and so you know it, it, it's great because i if you guys are on the discord or michael notice sometimes it's like 1 30 in the morning i'm on the discord somebody's there right like like we have some night owl uh resellers and if you're doing this uh, on your own and you're just like hey you know i just uh, I, I want to just hear what somebody's up to, or I just want to mess it. It's okay. Like somebody's going to be there. Somebody's going to read it. So for me, it's been great. Uh, you know, I don't feel like the pressure, or, you know, on social media that, you know, I can, I can only communicate a certain time during the day. It's just discords running 24 hours a day. 
right? And if you have a question, it, it surprised me. Somebody had like a beanie baby question, which were yes, <laughs> I didn't think a, I didn't think there would be anybody because yeah. we're only like a hundred people, yeah. right? Uh, are there any beanie baby experts? And I, I was like, oh, I, I don't know if we're gonna find that. Sure enough, we had one. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, there's been an expert so far for everything. I don't think there's been a question yet that's been unanswered. I mean, some of them, it's just like pointing people in the right direction is not like a direct like do this or do that mm -hmm. but but there's always been an answer pretty much for every question that's been presented and again it's one of those things where there's a lot of times where i'm like man i i don't have an answer for that but somebody else does and so that's what makes the community so great so thankful to all of our patreon supporters who have, if you're a patreon supporter you get access to our discord so uh, check out patreon uh, slash pure hustle podcast and for you know 555 a month you'll have access to our discord and again it's not a cook group we're not we're not just dropping uh, fresh bolos every day and that's the whole point but even though every bolos. day there are bolos yeah. every day yeah. so so yeah just check it out less than 18 cents a day go to the link below patreon.com slash purosal podcast all right what's going on with you <sighs> you know so i'm glad you had a great time i'm glad everything's going well for you i gotta tell you i'm probably uh, mm, yeah i would say probably at the lowest in reselling probably in a couple of years mm. Uh, and, and I'm not, I'm not bummed about it. Cause I, I do believe things will rebound and it's interesting. Uh, cause I think about, and I hope I'm saying his name, right. You've run into this guy. Has there been somebody that you've run into that listens to a podcast who has like glasses and I think uh, so. Yeah. Is his name Matt? Oh yeah. Yeah. Matt. Matt. Yeah. Okay, good. I got it right. I feel terrible. I asked him twice for his name. So I ran into him at, at a garage sale and I'll share about that garage sale. And we spent probably like 10, 15 minutes chatting it up and, uh, I, I told him how, how how much he inspired me. And so, man, if you're listening, you inspired me. And you already know that because I told you that. But two years ago, I ran into him at a Salvation Army. And and I was doing full time. It was probably year three of being full time. And I, I was doing full time mainly because of Amazon. Like I, I had I had great inventory that I had picked up from Toys R Us and 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 Staples when they closed out and Shopco in the Midwest. I traveled out there and and, you know, things were going well. And I, I kind of was moving away from Amazon and and just trying to see if I could just do full time doing eBay because I just felt the Amazon hustle exhausting. And I kind of wanted to just slow down my life. My kids were getting older. And I remember having that conversation with him and he he had been telling me how he's been reselling for years. You know, he, <laughs> it's just it, the questions I ask are to sound weird, probably when I'm like, hey, so do you have a place to stay? Can you pay your bills? Like, I, Because I still believe like it's so odd that I can go to garage sales and I can sell enough stuff to live better than I did when I was a teacher mm. or even an administrator, which sounds weird. It shouldn't be that way, but that's a whole nother conversation. So in talking with him, he, he had given me hope and encouragement and said, I've been in this for a while. I, you just, you know, eventually you learn about certain niches and, and you know, you, you, you'll make it happen. And that was two years ago. And so we're at a garage sale and, and, and he came up to me and was like, Hey, Orlando. And it's funny after Mike said that, you know, we'll hardly run into people. I would say every time I go source and I run into people that listen to the podcast now. Nice. <laughs> so it just, Hey, it is what it is. So, so he's like, Hey, how's it going? It was awesome. It was awesome talking to you, Matt. And, uh, I just want to share on the podcast again, that conversation stuck in my mind like that entire time. And even now, even during this rough time right now, it's still in my mind that this is doable. It's still feasible. I'm just going to have to adapt or maybe, you know, the market will rebound here soon. Like th things are going to change. Uh, and so, you know, I, I really appreciate people sharing their knowledge. You know, again, I, I think there's this perspective because we have a YouTube channel and we do a podcast and we're on social media that we, you know, somehow have not, not saying arrived. I don't think anybody, we're, we, we've never positioned ourselves and no, no one really that listens to us thinks we've arrived. At least I don't think they they do. But um, I think sometimes people position individuals that are on social media as like experts. And I got to tell you, I, I am not an expert. Mike's not an expert. I, I, I've done this for 10 years. And I'm, you know, for me to be able to say right now that uh, things are kind of rough, like, I don't know. I, maybe I'm just not getting it. Maybe I, I don't know what it is. But I am motivated knowing that I've been down this valley a few times. So I hope things will rebound. I will say I am in survival mode in the sense that I've been listening and listening and listening and listening and the results I'm getting are not there. And, you know, you see these YouTube channels like if you list this much, you'll get this much. And maybe I'm listening to the wrong stuff. Maybe I need to just go source and use the electronics and just test electronics 24 hours a day. And maybe that's what's going to rebound. I, I don't know. But, you know, 
I'm sure I'm not the only one that's out there that has gone and, and listed like crazy and, and you're still not seeing the results. And so I'm here to empathize with you. I'm here to tell you this is the way it is right now. Uh, and, you know, sales have been all over the place. I've had days where it's been a really good day. And then I go a day where I make a hundred bucks. And for me, if I made a hundred dollars a day, that's only 3K a month. I, there's no way I could pay my bills. There's just, there's just no way. And so, you know, I've had to dip a little bit. Uh, it hasn't been hundred dollar days, but I've had to dip a little bit into my capital and use that for bills. Uh, this time last year, I'll never forget sitting. I think we were in the other space, weren't we? At this time, we weren't doing the podcast here yet. And I remember looking at my Ethereum, and my Ethereum was like at forty two hundred, and and life was grand. And life was was good. Like I, you know, it was anything you touched a year ago turned to gold. Whether it was crypto, whether it was stocks. Uh, reselling, like it was, it was really good. And now I'm in a place where, uh, all that money, all that money's gone in the sense that, you know, the, I stayed in the market. Uh, I got out of the market. I stayed in the market. I, I messed around too much with, uh, too much money in the market and it just, yeah, <laughs> I took some major losses. And so now, now I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to rebound from that. And I'm also trying to figure out, okay, I'm going to make this work. And so, you know, you just keep moving. You just keep moving forward. And, uh, you know, I, this podcast, we get, we have to continue, uh, to be real about stuff, the good and the bad. And so again, it, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not in dire straits, but you know, if this goes on for, let's say, I don't know, a year. Yeah. Then it might be time to go, you know what, there's probably something else I need to be doing. Right. I, I don't anticipate that happening, but it's time now on the other side the buying opportunities right now have been amazing, amazing. And so I had some awesome scores this weekend. Uh, if you caught us on Instagram, you saw some of that. Uh, so the first, first garage sale I went to, I only went to two. Wow. Two. And Memorial Day is notorious for being terrible. Notorious. Like it's like nobody, everybody's out, you know, doing a barbecue or getting ready for a barbecue. So the first one I go to. I went there because they said they had hunting stuff. So and, and hunting stuff, you know, if you find the right brands like Sitka is like one that I really enjoy picking up and there's a few other brands, you can do really well. And in the part of San Diego that we're in, a lot of people go hunting. So I show up and it's huge. There's a lot of people there. There's a ton of hunting stuff, but all the hunting stuff isn't like top tier hunting stuff, but there's a lot there. So I'm like looking and I overhear the guy, and Matt, Matt was at this one, by the way. I overhear the guy in the background goes, man, I was just going to go donate this all to, uh, to Goodwill. Oh, man. And when I heard that, I'm like, yeah, That's okay, when you know. This, is, this, can be, this can go really well. And so I'm looking, and I find a few things, and, and you know, I asked him for how much. And uh, I think I picked up, I don't know, at least three to $400 net of stuff, and he just wanted 40 bucks. And he's like, hey, how about you take more? How about you get this bag over here and you fill up this bag and I'll let you get anything you can fill up in the bag for $10 or something like that. And I thought, what? Like, this is, I, 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 gold. I need a strike. So then I asked him, I said, how about if I buy out everything? If I just buy everything? And he goes, $75. I'm like, oh, $75 for everything on top of the 40? He's like, no, no, $75 for everything. And I was like, what? Uh, yes. Like I actually, if you caught the Instagram, I laughed because I, I, I just was in shock as to the fact that he said 75. You don't have a good poker face, huh? I did not. Cause I, it was, I mean, all I need to sell is like two or three pieces and I'm going to be, I'm going to make that $75 back. Right. We're talking about probably on the conservative end, that $800 score, thousand dollar net score conservatively, you know, probably more than that, probably close to 2k when all is said and done. And uh, I did look up some of the pieces when I got back home and some of them are like foreign uh, camel pieces, which go for a little bit more. And, and so, yeah, it was, it was good. And then I go to an estate sale and it was one of those beautiful estate sales where you go and there's no prices on anything mm. and everything is in disarray and it, there's just a lot happening. And it's just like, you want that. You don't want the one where it's a company that has priced everything that they have everything in, you know, in orderly fashion and they're on top of everything. Like you want the ones where they're so busy that they just want to keep moving you. Right. Mm -hmm. So they'll just, they, they don't want to spend all this time negotiating. So I go to this one and I'm buying stuff here and there. And, you know, you talk about sourcing with kids. So th this is, 
so there was an attic there and my son pointed out the attic and I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I go and open up the attic and, and it wasn't one of the attics where you got to get on a ladder. It's kind of like on the wall entrance right. kind of attic. And I open it and I see stuff in there. So I see one of the sale workers. I'm like, hey, can I, uh, can I, can I get in there? Now I'm a big dude. So, you know, big dude asking that, that's kind of like, maybe they're asking for kicks. They don't really mean it. I think that's what went through her mind, but I made it in there and it was awesome because it wasn't like a national lampoons Christmas vacation. Do you remember that when Chevy chase gets on the top and he falls through the ceiling? Yeah. You so didn't fall through. That didn't happen. No, yeah. I made sure that, you know, my uh, proportion itself was able to be fully supported on this attic. Cause that would have been scary. So I get up there and I'm finding all kinds of stuff. I feel like I was on American pickers. So it was awesome. And then next thing you know, like my son like jams his finger on a door and he got mad and he took like one of the things that I sourced and like chucked it across the room oh, no. and it broke in half. And I it just, uh, you know, and I'm like in an attic. I'm like, I can't like jump out of the attic. Yeah. So I'm like watching this from like, you know, 20 feet away. And I'm like, oh man, like, yeah. Sourcing with kids is uh, is an experience. It can be interesting for sure. It, it was interesting. So anyways, um, you know, I helped, I helped, uh, the state come down. I said, Hey, do you want me to just stay up here and just unload stuff out of here? And they're like, yeah, that's great. And then we'll also work with you on the price. So I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm here to work. So I, I took out all the stuff you and turned it was, into an employee while you were there. I did. I was, I was in, and, and that's another way to network. I mean, you know, you're helping them out and, uh, I'm sure they made more money on the stuff that I took out for them than I made on this. Oh, I don't know. On the stuff that I sourced. Right. Because, you know, there was all kinds of randomness that I took out. So anyways, long story short. And uh, I'm going to move into our random stories and then I'll be quiet because I've talked a lot. But, uh, you know, I picked up all kinds of stuff for like a hundred bucks, hundred bucks. I, I picked up a train set that's going to sell for five to six hundred. I picked up another train set that's going to sell for 50 to hundred. I picked up uh, like all kinds of stuff. It was just insane. And to think that that morning. I almost rationalized myself to staying in bed. Like it felt so, you know, it's like nice and warm and, and yeah. it's don't, just, don't trust, uh, don't trust morning self. Like, and don't I'm trust the, morning Mike. That's my, that's my rule. That's just, yeah. That's facts though. Like I could have missed out yep. and I would have never known. I would have never known. All right. That's, that's enough of me. What's some random stories, Mike. So, okay. Two, Two random stories. So one of them, when I was at a garage sale a while back, I I saw a box of 1989 Topps baseball cards. This is the complete set, unopened, okay. right? And so I don't do my due diligence to research this. What I did was I typed in 1989 Topps cards baseball. 1999? 1989. Okay, okay. And I'm looking these up and I see some individual cards selling for pretty decent money. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, sweet. This this whole box is ten bucks, and I'm seeing some cards selling for you know five dollars here, fifteen dollars here. I'm like, I'm gonna be able to worst case scenario to part this thing out. Get home and do my research, and maybe somebody who does baseball cards and knows more about this, they can let me know. But from what I gather, when sets do things like that, like it was the complete however many two hundred seventy nine baseball cards or whatever, when they sell them in a complete set like that, it's not all of the like high end cards. Oh, it's really? Like, it's I a didn't complete. It's a complete series, but you've got to, you know, buy the booster packs or like separate packs in order really? to get the ones that have. I collected like, in that era too. I didn't really? know that. Maybe I did, and I just forgot. So, I mean, again, I could be wrong. I'm not an expert on this, but when I looked up the 1989 complete box, the exact box that I had, they're selling for like ten bucks on eBay for like the set. Yeah. So I'm like, oh man, I think I, I think I, I think I did wrong here. Got bamboo. I, I think I. I think I got the wrong cards. I think it's the individual cards that are selling for a lot were like special edition cards. You had to get through boosters that only came through them or something. I don't know. Anyways, I'm like, well, I'm going to list this high. I'm going to just put it up for 25 bucks with shipping and see what happens. If I end up having to eat the $10 cost on this, whatever, I'll give them to my son. So like three weeks later, it sells full price. No, no offers. I had best offer on it and it just sold. And I'm like, sweet. I was able to. So it only I only ended up making like $15 profit. Mm -hmm. But from going from, man, this was this is a bad buy. I didn't do my mm -hmm. research this, to, hey, I actually made a little bit of profit off of this it was like kind of a good feeling. I was kind of glad about that. 
Uh, but it also makes me realize this is something I know nothing about. I bu- I've bought in a box of baseball cards before and it was like a big box. And I ended up selling those at a garage sale that I had just because I was going through individual cards and wasn't finding anything worth value, spending so much time. And so just recognizing this is a, a niche that I don't have enough experience in. So you got to be careful because a lot of times like Pokemon right now is hot. So a lot of people will think like, oh, I bought a bunch of Pokemon cards and, you know, I'm willing to pay up on them. Well, if they're the newer edition cards, they might not be worth anything. Mm -hmm. And so you really got to know you got to you can't just jump on the hype of, hey, basketball cards are doing well or baseball cards or because if it's not the right ones, because even within that niche that's doing well, there's going to be the major flops. There's going to be the areas of I mean, because it's all supply and demand. So if if it's their mass, the mass produced versions of it that are easily to to access. Yeah, they're not going to be worth anything. So you got to be careful with that. But it was kind of nice to actually have a little bit of profit. The other thing on uh on sunday afternoon i went to i went to eat with my family went out for kind of like a memorial day thing and while we're there i get a message on my phone and i see it's a message regarding the otis funkmeyer uh oven so if you remember last episode i talked hustle of the week and i sold an otis funkmeyer oven it was really big it was one of the heavier items i've ever had to ship we had to franken box it it was a lot of work and all i can think is oh no it didn't make it it broke something terrible happened to it and i'm holding my son at the time so i'm like not able to like get to my phone i just look at my wife i'm like we have a message about the the cookie oven finally i'm able to like maneuver my phone enough so that i can open up and i realize oh this is an offer up message because i had listed it on offer up too and uh and it was just somebody wanting to buy it for you know 150 bucks which honestly hindsight 2020 I probably would have preferred to sell it for 150 bucks locally because I wouldn't have had to put the time into no fees. No, yeah, no fees. I wouldn't have had to, sh- to ship it. And I've got the countdown now, right? Of like, what if this thing, something happens with it? It, it arrived and I haven't heard anything yet about it not working mm-hmm. or being broken. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming it arrived in good condition, but I could still get something, you know, t- a couple weeks from now saying, hey, uh, I tried to cook in it and it burns on one side and something's broken. And, you know, I, I just mm-hmm. don't know because I tested it, but I didn't bake cookies in it. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I, I don't know. Um, so I was like, man, local would have been nice, but just that roller coaster of I've got a message. Oh no, oh no, oh no. To, oh, it's an offer up message. Mm. So uh, it was just that that up and down of oh my goodness, this could have been really bad. We're so poor programmed to assume the worst. Assume the worst on eBay messages. Well, because if you get a message on an item yeah. after it's sold, yeah, it's ninety nine percent. I mean, I've had good reviews where people have been like. You know, thanks. Great packaging. But those are more rare. Those are rare. But but those are reviews. They're almost never messages. You know, yeah. it's not yeah, often you open up a message and they're like, "Thank you so much for this item." So if you get a message on a sold item, it's like, "Oh no, what went wrong?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. What about you? Random oh. stories? Yeah, yeah. So a couple of things. Uh, first of all, just uh, you know, uh, it, it's just interesting how many resellers there were that knew the podcast when I was at these things. And, and actually one of, uh, one of them, uh, her name, her IG, she goes as vintage mermaid booty, I think on All Instagram. Right. And she had, she, I remember, uh, she had messaged me and she said, Hey, you know, I'm at this estate. So I'm like, where? Like, come say hi. And, and you know, everybody's in business. And she kind of was like, Oh, I was, you know, I already left and always say hi to us. If you see us say hi to us, granted, hopefully not mid negotiation. Well, don't go like, Hey, love the podcast about reselling. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I mean, but no one does that. Like, everybody's been respectful, but uh, it was just unless it was, it's you with the uh, storage war guy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. If you haven't caught that episode, check that out two episodes ago. But it was just awesome uh, running into her, running into a few other resellers. It was just, it was just great. And, and again, I always say this: there's so much out there to source because the stuff that she had sourced, I would have never looked at, never looked at. And you know, she had messaged me and said, "Hey, this is what I picked up." And I'm looking at stuff. I'm like, I, I didn't even notice that, right? So, again, there's so much to source, so much to source. But anyways, always say hi. Uh, and the reason I bring her up is because I, I was kind of concerned. I didn't tell her this, but I was concerned that she was the one that was doing this. So. I'm in line at this estate till and uh, she actually had DM me. So uh, that prices were high at this estate sale. For me, the items I, w- I was looking at, the prices weren't high. And plus the fact that I already had kind of networked my way through working in the attic that, you know, I was going to get a good deal. So 
I'm there in line and and I hear this lady and 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 you know the cashier is like, oh, it'll be so and so, and she's like, and, and she's like, what? And then the lady's like, what? Wait, just to clarify, you don't know whether or not this is the person. Yeah, well, at first I didn't know if this was her or not. Oh, okay. Right. So I I, I kind of didn't. I wanted to say, was that you being snarky? But I kind of didn't want to say that because if what if it was her? Well, did you clarify that it wasn't? I, her? I, I did. I, I did. Okay. She doesn't okay. even know the story happened. Okay. So so this is all happening in my mind. Like, is gotcha. this is this the person DMing me? So and just, if, just to be clear for our listeners. The the story Alondra's uh, telling the she that he's talking about isn't necessarily the same she who uh, is a listener of the podcast. Yeah. So so Mermaid, who was a listener of the podcast, right, was there, but I didn't know where she was because he she had messaged me while at the state sale. At the same time, uh, there's another lady that's in front of me buying stuff, right? And so, you know, I, I assume that it could be anyone, right? It could be anyone, right? So I'm just hoping it's not her. It wasn't her because. Uh, our listener, when she walked away, she smiled and I kind of was wondering like, okay, I, do I know this person? Then I figured it out. Like she knew who I was. I just didn't know who she was. But the lady that wasn't our listener was at the cashier and the cashier was like, oh, this is a good deal. You're getting this stuff. She's like, no, your prices are so high. I'm sorry. I know. It. But that's how she said it. Like, and she's like, this is ridiculous. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I hope you don't listen to this podcast, but that's not a bright move. Yeah. Like what you haven't even finished paying and you're already complaining about the prices. Like you, you can't do that. And so one of the workers looks at me and like smiles and go, and I like smiled at her. Cause I'm like, this is like, I don't think you understand. I like in my mind, I'm like, I, we, we, we understood this is poorly, poorly done. And so, you know, while she's leaving, I go, you know, I, I told the cashier, I'm like, you know, sometimes it's better to, you know, attract flies with honey. Yep. And then she goes, the cashier goes, are we the flies or are we the honey? Mm. And I'm like, well, I'm just saying like negotiation 101 is don't be rude to the people that you're trying to make a deal with. Like you will go far more into a great negotiation if you are smiling and in a positive attitude than if you're just whining and complaining about the high prices. I mean, for crying out, the stuff I got. They could have easily said 200. I was ready to pay 200 for everything. But they said 100. Mm. And why? I was nice. I helped out. And I'm not trying to, you know, put a reseller badge on myself. Like, look at me. But I'm telling you, the old school, maybe this is old school. It's kind of like a, you ever watch Gran Torino? No. Oh, it's a great movie with Clint Eastwood. So, so Clint Eastwood is trying to, trying to teach this young kid how adults talk. And he goes to the barber, and again, there's bad language, so it's probably not something you should watch with your kids. But he goes to the he goes to the, his barber, and he tells the kid, "This is how you talk to adults." And so he goes in, and he's like, he's like cussing out the barber, and he's like racial slurs, and the other guy's giving it back. And he's like, "Now you try. This is how you talk to adults." And the kid like shocks everybody because it's like, "Whoa! Like, where did this come from?" But Maybe that's the way things were done back in the day in reselling. Like you, you pick out the worst flaw in something and you, you ride that flaw until you eventually break the person that's selling it. And you know, you've had, we've talked about this many times. The reseller's like, Oh, this is junk. I can't believe you're selling it for that high. No one wins. Like you will not win by, by talking like that. Instead, it's like, huh? Yeah. I noticed there's some issues here. Are you willing to work on the price? Like it, this is really nice. Uh, it, you want to make sure that you're positive in your engagement. And so this lady walked away. She overpaid for her stuff. She could have definitely negotiated a lower price. And she burned the bridge because if she comes back, they're going to know her as being the mean lady. Right. I could come back. Like, for example, when I left, I said, hey, when are you guys doing the estate sale again tomorrow? Maybe I'll stop by. Like, oh, yeah, come on over. You know, it's pretty close time, but we'll be here. We'll work with you. A whole lot better reaction than the other lady. So just be nice. Just be nice. Don't be, you know, in that movie, Gran Torino, though, Clint Eastwood goes to a transformation. So eventually he's like that, that grumpy older guy that like hates everybody. And then at the end, he's this, this loving guy. It's a great movie, by the way. It's, it's actually, an it's a, it's a, it's, a tear, it's one you get tears in your eyes at the end. Mm. It's a redemption story. It's good. So everybody anyways. loves those. All right. That, that is, that, I've said plenty there. All right, hey, before we move on, uh, if you haven't following us on social media, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We are Pearson Podcast. We are making ground on TikTok again. I've been posting on TikTok, and it's been great seeing you there. And uh, I like the community there. I mean, there there are the 
I've said this before. That's why I hated TikTok. The scammers, the scammers are there. Like, buy this at this store, $5 in a sell for 100 It's like, no, no, it's not. Like, dude, what are you, what, you're just trying to sell a course, you know? Uh, so appreciate all of you. If you haven't followed us there, make sure to follow us there. Uh, and um, I got a few things from that that I wanted to, uh, to take out for our reseller topics. And also, uh, you can follow us on Twitter. We are Pure Hustle Cast. Uh, luckily, we haven't lost anybody to bots. Uh, and then uh, that's another play on word. I, I wanted to talk about that too because I think that relates to eBay. Mm. You know how Elon is like now closing the Twitter deal, right? Because he doesn't believe all the followers. And so eBay kind of did something like that by changing their views on their mm-hmm. page. Yep. So. Anyways, also, you can give us a call 619-738-1170. That's 619-738-1170. Shoot us an email at purehustlepodcast at gmail.com. That's purehustlepodcast at gmail.com. Also, if you're listening to the podcast for the first time and love to see our bald bearded mugs, bald bearded, yeah, mugs, uh, come on over to YouTube. Hit that subscribe, that like button, and that bell notification. And as always, love all the iTunes reviews. If you really enjoyed the podcast, jump on over. Help us on the algorithm for you. Just write a quick note and give us that five stars. And I uh, greatly appreciate you. Yeah. And then uh, last of all, AmericanBowlBoy.com, one of our best sponsors, always provides quality product at a good price, fast shipping, next day, two day, local pickup. Uh, pretty soon we're going to be talking about their Instapacks because I think there's going to be some deals coming through for their Instapacks too. And so check them out there. Uh, but again, AmericanBowlBoy.com and uh, just use our link so they know that we uh, sent you over there. Yeah, it's good stuff. About to make another order. Love it. I need to make another order. All right. We ready? Yeah, we're ready. The end of GoDaddy as we know it. eBay is changing its page views. Amazon Prime is back. And garage sale booms during recession. All of this and more on Reseller News. Orlando, take it away. I feel like I, I just took it away for like 20 minutes and I'm back. I'm sorry. All right. So you like QuickBooks, huh? Yeah. QuickBooks is fine. It's good. So I, I use TurboTax to do my taxes and it comes free with it a lot of times. It's like a, a special deal that comes with it. So uh, yeah, it works great for me. Okay. All right. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I talked about this last podcast, but I'm not dealing with this until a week from now because uh, I'm going to have more time to myself. And so I, I just, I just, it's overwhelming. But in case you didn't hear this on our last podcast episode or you, you're not following us on social media, Go Daddy is no more. And I believe you have until June 23rd. There's a special promotion to transfer all your stuff over to uh, QuickBooks. I've also heard of this other app called Reseller Genie. So hmm. they're fairly new. Let us know in the comments. I really want to know. I, I think we asked this last time. We got a couple of feedback. And on the Discord, we've been going back and forth. But uh, this is what I want to know. Of the software that you guys use, is it... Keeping? What was that for like bookkeeping? for bookkeeping is it number one is it synced to ebay managed payments like that is huge i don't care about amazon syncing because I, I i hardly ever used the amazon stuff on godaddy i usually just went straight to amazon and printed their reports because they do a really good job which is unfortunate that ebay does a really poor job on that reporting stuff but uh so is it synced to manage payments and are you able to sync multiple of your cards and I got to look at the, I haven't even looked at the pricing, but do you find that the pricing, I don't want to say affordable because I think QuickBooks is money compared to GoDaddy. GoDaddy, I think it was, I don't even know what I was paying. Maybe 60 bucks a year. Who knows? I have no idea. It was so cheap. I didn't even think twice about it, but I know QuickBooks is, is a lot more. And the more you want to do in QuickBooks, the more expensive it gets. And so anyways, yeah, just, just so you know, just, I'm really sad about it. Just one last thing. Yeah. I mean, it, the nice thing is those things take care of all that for you. If you got a little bit of time, though, Excel sheets or Google sheets, they're not that difficult to set up. Uh, you got to do a little bit more manual entry, but then you have a little bit more control over the exact you know things you're you're keeping track of. Uh, so it's it's not the end of the world to go that way. Maybe you're spending a little bit more time. But uh, if again, you always got to balance time and money. Is it worth an extra how much money per year? versus maybe an extra mm-hmm. hour of year of work. Cause it's really not that much once you have a, a sheet set up of every month going in and adding in the numbers. So uh, you, you just kind of got to figure out what works best for you. Do you have more time or do you have more money? Yeah. I, I just, I'm just not happy about it. Like it's just, all right. Hey, uh, this other thing. Uh, so going to eBay, eBay, have you noticed a drop in sales on eBay? Um, you've no, said you've had good sales, no, yeah, right? my sales have been okay. Yeah. yeah see, so, and again, 
you know, Orlando's talking about survival mode. Man, I just talked. Have you watched? Did you watch the Seinfeld episode where Jimmy talks to third person? It was the one with the strength shoes, the strength basketball shoes, and they know this guy at the gym, and he always talks yep, about himself yep. in third person. Yep. So I just did that. Maybe it's because I watched that episode. Yeah, either that or too much Elmo. Too much Sesame <laughs> Does Street. Elmo do that too? Oh yeah, Elmo always talks to third person. That's that's one of the main reasons why uh, <laughs> I I don't let my son watch Sesame Street is kids already talking to third person too much, and you got to kind of correct them out of that by speaking correctly. And yeah, Elmo is almost tired. Elmo likes this. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, I, I say all this because I'm not the only one. I had a lot of people DM me telling, telling me that their views on their item have gone way down. And if the way you know that is you go to your charts, you know, you look at your reports and it, it's one of the first ones. And I'm not sure if this is tied into it. There, there's good and bad here. So I, I want to hear what Mike's perspective is here. So eBay changed their page views. You probably got a message in the app from lifetime to 30 days. As far as the times somebody views an item? Correct. Like so for example, view. like my fingerlings that have been posted there since 2018, whatever, have like 2,225 views. And now they have zero. And they're going to have zero for a long time. Right? Because no one's looking at them now. Right. And maybe I shouldn't even have them posted on anymore, yeah. which might be one right. of the, the uh, a good reason for this is if you've got a lot of inventory, you're really not necessarily keeping track of unless you're managing every single item, how many more views. Well, there was only 200 views on this last month. Now there's 240 views. So I've had 40 views this month. Whereas what really matters for us is are people are people engaging with my item now? And so if you're seeing an item that you've got had listed for a while and maybe had a lot of page views, so you think, oh, a lot of people have looked at this item. But if you're seeing the last 30 days for the total number of item views and you realize, hey, nobody's looked at this item. And then a second month, hey, only two people have looked at this item. That might be the trigger that you need to have in order to look at the prices and say, okay, maybe this market has changed. Maybe I'm there's it's too saturated and I'm overpriced. So that could be something that you can use as like a marker, an indicator of, I need to go and check my prices. Because right now, if you've got 500, 1,000 items, however many items listed, you're not necessarily managing all of those. Like have the have Cole Haan's shoes gone down in the last three months? Has this, nobody has time to micromanage a large store yeah, like that. Yeah, Terra Pico will tell you that a lot faster. Right. But if you are, if you can kind of just organize, sort by page views, and you realize, hey, these 10 items have not had any interaction this month. Let me just quickly look up these items. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking up the ones that are still getting lots of attention, because then your pricing is probably fine on those. You just haven't found the buyer yet. It's just potentially a decent tool that you can use for that. Yeah, it's all over the place info. I, I try to do more research on it because you have some people like the bigger resellers are like, it mean, it doesn't mean anything. If anything actually works to your advantage, because before the reason that some resellers said do not cancel until similar to boost the algorithm is because you would lose your place in Google search because now it's a brand new item and it was higher in SEO and now it's not there anymore. Well, now everything's going to be canceled out. It doesn't matter anymore. I don't know if it, it just because it's not showing you that number, though, doesn't mean that it's going to change the SEO ranking. So? Yeah, because SEO is going to be based off of how many times. So uh, a, a search engine optimizer, a search engine is going to, I can't remember what they call it, spider or something, whatever, but it, it okay. searches, it searches and catalogs websites and items within like hyperlinks within a website. Okay. And it does that every so often, every however many hours or however many times an hour uh, search engines are doing that. And so that's why when you start a new website, nobody's going to your website unless you're finding a way to drive traffic there. Mm -hmm. But the longer your website's been open, the more times it's been searched, the more interactions you have it's going to search, it's going to rank higher than newer websites because okay, it's been okay. there. So I would imagine the same thing is true for items. If people are just Googling something because eBay might have changed how they're monitoring it, but that's not going to necessarily affect what a search engine. Okay. Cata that's good like, to know. That's why I asked you. Yeah. Okay. And so the other side I've heard is that it's good. Like Mike had said, you know, you can determine like if you have a lot of views and it's not selling, then maybe your price is too high, right? That's some data. Now, Mike and I have doomed ourselves already because we don't publicly share our store, but we have a lot of people that follow our store and look at stuff in our store just because of the podcast. And so our, our metrics, it's funny because people ask us like, what's your sell through? And, and here's the problem. The problem is that our numbers are, are messed up, right? Because if we had a complete hidden store, 
we could give you real organic numbers and say, hey, you know, this is based on the traffic we're getting is based on real buyers where the reality is it's all over the place for us. I mean, I get people sometimes that buy stuff from the store that follow us on Instagram and then they they wait for me to list it and then they buy it. And I don't know how to differentiate who's who. Right. And so I don't know how much stock to put into uh, this page views. Uh, and maybe it has something to do with the slow sales, but it got released at the exact same time that sales are down overall. So it's really hard to put a finger on why, th you know, things are the way they are. So uh, we'll see how this plays out. We'll see uh, here, this. I was thinking about, <laughs> you know, this is my life as a boring full-time reseller. I was thinking about this. eBay's not going to do something that's going to cost them money right now. The, if we want to go that eBay is a villain, we could go like eBay did this. So then people will more likely have to promote their listings to make more money because in their last quarterly report, they made more money off of fees and managed payments than they did off of selling stuff. Or you could look at on the other end that eBay did this because in the end, they realize if they do this, they'll be able to sell more and make more money. So it's wherever you land on stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> you get that. All right. Do you buy stuff on Prime Day? Uh, occasionally, I, I kind of look at Prime Day as like Black Friday in the sense that most of the stuff that goes on sale on Prime Day, at least the stuff that's like heavily av advertised on Amazon, is not not the stuff I would typically buy anyways. It's kind of the you know almost chinzy things. Occasionally, there's like really big deals, but occasionally I'll get sucked into the the lightning deals on things, especially mm. if it's in a, a category like board games or something like that. Uh, kind of have an interesting Amazon story. So we got charged. I think I'm like pretty sure that Amazon for Amazon Prime for years, like $139 now. Mm -hmm. And we got overcharged by like $12. It was really weird. Like we had a higher fee for it than mm -hmm. it's supposed to cost. So my wife called them up and said, Hey, I, I want like what's going on. Like I was overcharged for this. And he goes, Oh, no problem. I'll refund you. And we didn't realize that whatever he did, I think he refunded the whole thing and it canceled our Amazon Prime. So now oh, that's not good. Yeah. So we bought a whole bunch of stuff with our Amazon Prime card. We have a card that I opened up, gosh, when I was 18, I think, through Amazon. And we get 5% on everything we buy on Amazon. And we only got 3% on things. And it was pretty frustrating because we, you know, paid several hundred dollars for things the last couple of days and we weren't getting the prime points and things weren't the shipping when we finally had an order under 25 bucks. It wasn't free shipping. Like, what's going on? Yeah, we don't have prime now. So but yeah, Prime Day, Prime Day can be pretty okay. Yeah, the only reason I bring this up is the first time it's been back in the summer since, you know, the huge thing that happened over the last two years. And so <clears throat> I'm really encouraging you guys if if you know, I always talk about experimenting with Amazon uh in the summer. So you're ready for Q4. Maybe, maybe the time is now, right? If you can ship things in now, I mean, I mean in the next two weeks, because Prime Day is probably gonna be, I would think, the second week of July. Uh, that, you know, if you want to try FBA, like now is the time. Now you're not going to get a real deal, uh, number as to, you know, how things sell because on prime day, things sell a lot, a lot of stuff sells. And so you may, but maybe it'll be enough euphoria where you're like, I want to do this in Q4, you know? And so just something to think about, uh, a lot of people are still making money on Amazon. I do, uh, somebody had to mention this, uh, on social media, how, no one really posts on Am about Amazon anymore. And I think that is true. But again, the algorithm feeds you what it feeds you. But a lot of people have gone to Discord, right? Just strictly Discord. Like they're not posting on social media anymore. Uh, we're, we're one of the f rare, pe rare people that does everything. And I don't know how long we can continue doing that. Uh, but, uh, you know, Amazon, there's still a lot of money to be made. I just saw somebody had posted. Uh, and again, it's 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 just wild to me. Uh, somebody had posted a candy on on TikTok that sells for like two something at Walmart that people are selling for like forty, and I'm like, you just destroyed the market right there, mm. like that. Even if it went to a hundred people, that market is destroyed because all they have to do is go to a Walmart, find it, and undercut everybody. And if a hundred people do that, that audience was dead. But what I will say is, you know, maybe this is a good time to experiment. Right. Just just get your feet wet, you know, because it's going to be the prime stuff, the FBA stuff that's going to sell faster than the merchandise uh, fulfilled. All right. Hey, I think we're going to do a future update, uh, update, Mike, not update, but a theme episode on selling in a recession. But it's going to be research based because we can't make it. 
<laughs> we can't make it like experience based. Yeah. Not as much anecdotal evidence, which probably is a good thing. But uh, yeah, we'd still love to have your experiences. So if you're a listener and you've gone through a big recession as a reseller, you know, let us know how it went for you. What were what were the tips and tricks? What were your experiences? But yeah, we can definitely with the internet. That's the beautiful thing is there's a there's there's going to be actual data that we can look at over you know however long the last 20, 30 years. There's been a few recessions in those that period of time, and we can see what was reselling like compared to other times in that period. So yeah, that's good. So I came across this article by Routers back in two thousand nine, and this is right when the recession was beginning. And uh, the title was Garage Sales Booming as Recession Grinds On, right? And so they, they had looked at this couple in Arizona uh, and that they held garage sales, but uh, this time it wasn't about getting rid of clutter, it's about survival. And so that, you know, the money we're, and they, they're talking to this couple and the couple said, the money we are making here is going to be used to pay bills. The checks aren't coming in like they used to. Uh, and so, you know, they're bringing all this stuff out and nearly every weekend, listings appear online and on handmade signs taped to lampposts and propped up on street corners coast to coast, jostling for space with those announcing foreclosure sales and bank repossessions. So if we get into recession, we're going to be seeing some of that again. Uh, one b- barometer of the rising popularity is a threefold leap in garage sales, listings on free online classified advertising services such as Craigslist in the last two years. Uh, the firm attributes it to the struggling economy. And so they go on about bargain hunters and how people go like to eBay and people go to garage sales to look for deals. And so I'm wondering if that's already starting, right? Because, you know, and again, anecdotally myself, I've had some major scores these last two, three weeks and I haven't even tried. Right. And I see people online getting some amazing local deals. People on the discord are getting some amazing deals. And so, you know, it's probably going to be the best time to buy coming up now. Yeah, that's I mean, that's kind of what I think uh, uh, selling in a recession is probably going to be like that in the sense of if you're in the right markets, there's people are going to be buying used things or trying to save money. So you could probably stay afloat as far as, as your sales. But I would imagine even if it's a, a couple year period of time, it's going to be the time to stock up on inventory. It's the same thing with the stock market. When the stock market crashes, if you were in the market, it's going to hurt. But if you are not in the market or if you've got money, it's the time to buy, right? When everything's on sale. And so you buy then a few years, things start to pick back up. The economy's doing better. Who's got all the inventory now, right? You've got the inventory if you've been buying, buying, buying. And the hard part is, do you have the space for it? Can you store it? Are you willing to think long tail? Because even you mentioning it's been rough recently reselling. Mm-hmm. And you're like, can we, can I keep doing this long term? Is to think if you're really playing the long game, you kind of got to just stay afloat. Like I talked about last episode, uh, and and keep going as much as you can and keep stacking inventory, getting good deals on things, better deals than you're going to get at any other time. Well, you got to strike when you got to strike. Yep. You know, like I, I just, you know, it's funny you mentioned that I got a text an hour ago from a couple who four months ago wanted me to, you know, buy out some of their stuff and they just ghosted me. And then I don't know where now I'm getting a message. Hmm. Right. And so I, I bring this up because you mentioned the stock market and, and, you know, one of the worst things, the things that can't stand on TikTok is all the crypto and, and the stock influencers because they're like DCA, DCA, dollar cost average, dollar cost average. And what that means is, you know, as the market's going down, don't put all your money in, just put a little bit at a time as the market keeps going down. And hopefully, you know, it'll all balance out when it starts to rebound. But here's the thing. What if you don't have money anymore? Right. What if you're all out? And, and I say that because I know many of you right now are saying, Orlando, we're, we're, we were low on capital. Like you keep talking about garage sales and you t- keep talking about you can source all this, but we don't even have money to do that. And so what I'll say to that is, yeah, it, it, it's, it's going to be like that for a little bit for some of us, you know? And, and you could potentially basically exchange bad inventory for good inventory. Correct. Right. We've talked about doing sales, running coupons, putting your items on fire sales on eBay, that type of stuff. And if you've got inventory, let's say you, you picked up something for five bucks and you're hoping to sell it for 20. Well, if you've got to sell it for 10 or 15 to get the cash now, but you can buy something now for five dollars that'll sell for fifty dollars in the future, that's the better deal. Right. Mm-hmm. So you could potentially take inventory you currently have. If you're if you're low on capital, we might be going into a time where you want to have a lot of capital so that you can strike on those opportunities when they come up. So it potentially could just be almost almost just exchanging the inventory you have currently 
selling it at a discount in order to have capital so you can buy better inventory. And at the end of this period of time, however long it is, year, two, three years, however long it is, you walk away with a store with significantly better inventory and and, and total cost over what you were before. And then when the market does rebound and people have money, yep. you're in a, you're good, in a good place. place. So, you know, again, we had mentioned this, I think when we, uh, we did an interview a while back and we had talked about being inventory light and cash heavy. Right. And I think right now is the time. I do think, for example, whatnot, even though I sang the praises of whatnot, I do think whatnot is bringing, I'm just going to say it. I don't know if I should. Well, never going to get sponsored. But I do think whatnot is bringing the market down in the sense that stuff is selling for so cheap overall and whatnot that overall, like it, it, I, I'm looking at some of, uh, and this is anecdotally, but people are going to sell for cheaper than thrift store prices. Right. If, so if that's the case, that means that people are going to be more willing to sell things for cheap. Right. And so that's going to bring the entire market down. Right. Everybody. So it's going to be more of a race to the bottom uh, when it comes to goods. So just things to think about. I, I'm kind of I've been big about clothing, but even now I'm reevaluating like, do I want to do clothing? Because clothing right now is one of those things that, you know, people are buying a lot of, uh, for cheap. And what that means is that they can be selling it for cheaper. Right. And so maybe I need to get into hard goods. Maybe I need to get more into, uh, our bolo that we're going to talk about here, uh, in a little bit. Good. So, so, so how's your, uh, I think that's done. I'm done with reseller topics. I had something else to bring up, but I think it's, we've already yeah, talked so about it. Save it for next time. Okay. Okay. So uh, even skull shaving in here. Oh man. I love my skull shaver. So, my skull shaver, it, it makes it into my gym bag every day. And uh, and when I'm driving either to the gym or from the gym to work. That's right. You don't have your weights outside I just anymore. real quick. You, no, I do. I have, they're outside, but I started going to the gym when it was got cold and okay. kind of just been in that habit. So uh, yeah, it, it's so nice. I, I don't know if legally, technically you're allowed to to shave in a car. And that might, what? I'm sure you are. I mean, cause if I can't use a cell phone, like. I mean, it's less distracting, but I do have it a is, hand. It is California. Who knows? Um, but either way, the nice thing is I can quickly and easily shave my head and I, I roll up to work looking fresh and clean. And that's, you know, you can't put a price tag on that. But the nice thing is, is Skull Shaver does put a, a pretty a pretty low price tag on, on such a quality product. So if you are blessed like Orlando and I to not have the hair follicle hair follicle count of uh, the average person, then uh, you definitely want to to get yourself, treat yourself to something nice, get yourself a skull shaver and you're not going to regret it because man, I get a nice, clean, easy shave and, uh, and, and it's just part of my morning routine. I love it. All right. All right. With that being said, go to skullshaver.com, use our promo code HUSTLE with capital H. You'll get that deal. And now it's time for us to talk about What's your bolo? Yeah. All right. So my bolo, we've in the past originally held back uh, the the cricket cutting machine, and then that was way back in the day. Way though. back, we we're like, man, this is our hidden gym. And then we realized it wasn't so hidden. Um, <laughs> but you know, I've sold a fair share of of cricket or cricket accessories, which is nice. But they're still big units, and so shipping it's fine. But you know, you pay a little bit and. It's great when you get the cartridges, man, because when those sell, I mean, it's easy those to ship easy. those. Yeah. But I didn't even know this was a thing. We were at the thrift store with my family and my wife found two cuddle bugs. Have you seen these? I've seen them, but I've never like looked them up. Yeah. So it's it's like a hand crank cricket type thing, but it's smaller. It's like significantly smaller and lighter. And they're pretty sturdy, like pretty solid units that you don't have to really worry about them breaking. They, they're made of you know quality components. Uh, but the nice thing was we picked up, these were like three ninety nine dollars each and they sell for close to 50 bucks. They're in good condition. They're yeah. the right models. And it was just like a, an eye opener of like, oh man, like maybe I haven't ran into them at garage sales or maybe I, I just wasn't looking for them. Uh, but now I'm going to be looking for cuddle bug and cuddle bug accessories. So the different, you know, inserts that you put into them, the different things that come with them, those sell for really good money. And what I've noticed with the the, the crafts and hobbies, like the, the, the crafting market, as it were, is a lot of times at estate sales and garage sales, you pick up a lot of these things. And a lot of times with the accessories, it's all like new in package because people get into a hobby and people buy them stuff or they think like, I'm going to be a scrapbooker or I'm going to make this. And then they get the stuff and they don't really get into it as much as they thought they would. Hmm. And so, 
you know, you can buy all kinds of things. I mean, you, the, the little crochet, not crochet, but the little oh, yeah. uh, uh, needle cross point stitch. cross stitch things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of times those are unopened because again, somebody knows, Hey, grandma does this or, or auntie so-and-so loves making these things. I'm going to buy her this stuff. And it doesn't always get used. And so anyways, now I'll be looking for not only the cuddle bug units, but the, uh, the different accessories that go with them because they're easier to ship than a cricket and the prices aren't bad. So, and they're not electronic, so you don't have to worry about testing that. Yeah. I'll take a look. I've never, I've seen them, but I'm like, eh. Yeah. So might as well. Bolo. Yeah, it is Bolo. Cricket market, like the printers, the cricket market has died, especially when they, uh, un, they, uh, desync them or whatever, like, or they made it. No, not desync. They synced them. So certain cartridges only work with this printer that they came with. Mm-hmm. Right. But you can still pick them up and just say, you know, haven't been tested or don't know if they sink and they still sell. So, all right. So my bolo uh, is definitely one where I I do think it's going to become a major bolo as the economy goes down. Now, hopefully things for you. I I hope I really I do not. I do not want a recession. I my uh, my portfolio does not want a recession. (laughs) But uh, if it happens, if it happens, I do think work boots are going to go for good money now. I'm not going to give you a specific brand, but I will say always look up steel or composite toe boots always because those are what are used in the field. And and now that money's tight, you know, people are going to get a paycheck. They don't want their whole paycheck going to a Timberland pro pair of boots or a Danner or whatever, you know, they're going to go to eBay and they go to secondary market. And so just sometimes you can see Orlando walking around a thrift store uh, aisle just tapping the toes of boots, I just waiting to find the steel one. Sometimes I do that. I do that. So I, I do, especially if it's like a work boot, I will do it. So real quick, to, so you know the difference. Composite toe is not made of metal, right? So it's made of Kevlar, carbon fiber, plastic, or fiberglass. And usually this is picked up by like electrical engineers or people obviously that do not want a metal conductor in their boot. Okay. Uh, steel toe. Now these are lighter and these are usually more expensive if you can find composite toe. Uh, the steel toe ones, those are more the construction based, right? You don't want something to crush your toe. You want something strong. And so people look for those. Uh, and I got to tell you, the condition does not matter as long as the sole is intact and, you know, it's still wearable. Like insole is still okay. Uh, you know, cause they're work boots. People understand they're going to be, you know, maybe grimy, maybe scratched up, maybe distressed and people are still willing to buy. So you might be able to pick up one for a dollar and maybe flip for 30 or maybe pick up a good pair for five or 10 and sell it for 80, 90 in comparison to 200 that someone may be paying for. So keep an eye out for steel or composite toe boots. It's good stuff. All right. Did we cover everybody? Did we talk about every single one of our sponsors? Yep. Man, we did. We're looking On for, it. we're looking for a new sponsor. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to sponsor Pure Russell podcast, you know, you got a, you got a toothpaste company, whatever. It doesn't matter. Re- reseller Genie. If you want me to try your Caldine, that's right. let me know. All right. Anyways, um, what are you looking forward to, Mike? So, uh, this coming Saturday, I have a, a lot going on. I have, uh, my, my son has got accepted into this like school program thing and we have a, a symposium we're going to over okay. the weekend. Uh, so that's going to take up most of my Saturday morning. And then I have a, like a party I'm going to in the evening. So I'm not going to be able to do like my typical garage selling thing this Saturday. So I think I'm going to make this week another listing week, which again, kind of stinks, especially when I see the hauls that you're getting, but there is something the sales I'm not making. Yeah. Well, there's something to be said, you know, as I, as I'm listing items, I'm, I'm getting the sales. So, um, I don't know, I don't know what it is about if it's the items I picked up or if maybe it's like my store, you know, has been stale enough that eBay is rewarding me for getting some listings. I don't know. But every time I spend a weekend and just pound out a bunch of listings, sales definitely skyrocket. Um, I, I do notice that a lot of times it's the things that I just listed that sold. So I don't know if there's something to be said about ending listings and restarting them. I, I haven't had tons of success as far as like, mm-hmm. oh, that it's almost like it's a new listing all of a sudden sells. So I don't know if it needs to be more than just ending it and sell similar. I don't know if you have to like end and like kind of start from scratch Mm -hmm. but ebay definitely seems to favor newer listings at least in my experience so uh yeah i'm hoping to list because i got a lot of higher end items that i'd love to list and and pull in some profit yeah what Mm -hmm. about you so i just got a lot Uh, i have a lot of inventory i need to organize so i'm doing that Uh, i have i'm just gonna i'm gonna keep sourcing i'm gonna i need and and what i mean by that is i am not going uh to thrift stores 
uh, there's a, they, I don't know if they listen to the podcast, but on TikTok, Kings of eBay, this guy, he always like shares his knowledge. He's sold on eBay for 20 years. Uh, two observations he made. One observation, somebody had asked something about like, is it better to be in crypto or in reselling? And, uh, you know, crypto is not a tangible asset. Is that correct? Right. But reselling right. can be. Yeah. I mean, you've got correct. physical things you can sell. For right. Sure. And so had I thought about that six months ago, I'd have a lot more inventory. Right. And so anyways, I, I'm looking at that because I'm I'm trying to evaluate what are my next steps going to be as far as shifting around funds? Am I, am I going to get completely out of the market and I'm just going to go on a buying spree all summer? Like I'm going to buy like I've never bought before or do I want to, you know, the nice thing about last year when the market was good was I could make in two weeks. So it would take six months. Hmm. Like, and, and what, what did I have to do? I didn't do anything. Yeah. But I mean, you could also do that at casino and put it all on black. Yeah. You know, you just, also are risking a lot more. I, There's definitely a higher risk. It's all risk, risk to reward, right? So when it comes to buying, if you buy a jacket for 20 bucks and it sells for 40 bucks or 50 bucks, there's not a lot of risk there because eventually it's going to sell. You're probably at least going to be able to break even. But the profit margin isn't necessarily as high as, hey, I can put a little bit of money into crypto and all of a sudden it triples or quadruples in price or does the Dogecoin thing for a little bit and all of a sudden I'm a millionaire, but also I could lose everything just as fast. So, yeah, I mean, put it all in black or, or get real assets that is is slower, but definitely steadier. Yeah. So just, just thinking about that. And then uh, I'm going to deal with this GoDaddy thing here soon. Yay, bookkeeping. Yay. It, it's it's the worst. I do miss the part-time hustle. It was, I remember doing the turbo tax and it was just so much easier. Life was so much easier. Yeah. I know I'm just reminiscing right now because sales are slow. If sales are up, I'm like, no going back. Yep. And I, it's not that I'm going back. I just keep it real. Like I just right now, I'm, it's a lot. It's a lot more fun to list when you're making sales. Hmm. When you're listing and listing and listing and sales aren't coming through, you kind of like, am I a hamster on a wheel? Like, yeah. am I moving one pile of rocks to make another pile of rocks and moving that same pile back? Like, what, what's going on? Yeah. So anyways, while we're keeping it real, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for listening to us all the way through. And as always, make sure to be real, be relevant, and be reselling. Peace. Peace.